Good afternoon and welcome to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic, where we have the opportunity to showcase Dade County students, their many talents, and all their successes. Today we're featuring Dade Elementary School, and on our first segment, we get to highlight Mr. Cohen Blevins and Mrs. Ann Elise Cravat, who are the Dade Elementary Optimus oratorical winners for the school. These students had the challenge of writing a speech on optimism entitled, Where the Roots of My Opt Optimism Begin. And they first had to compete against their classmates, mm -hmm. and then they went to a school-wide competition where they competed against fourth graders and other fifth graders, and these guys were our two finalists. And they will go on February the 20th at Dade High School to compete against the middle school students and the high school students. And we invite all of you who want to attend to come to this program. It will, I promise you, it will make you feel like a true optimist and so proud of our students in the school system. Today we're going to start with Cohen and he is going to share the speech that he gave. Cohen, would you like to tell who your teacher is? My teacher is Miss Wood in fifth grade. Good. And would you like to go ahead and share your speech? Sure. Where are my roots of optimism? Where are my roots of optimism? Mary Lou Retton, a retired American gymnast, referred to as America's sweetheart, once said, Optimism is a happiness magnet. If you stay positive, good things and good people will be drawn to you. I, comp I completely agree. Helen Keller once said, Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. This hope and confidence can carry us through anything we face in our lives. I believe my roots of optimism often come in many forms. People, experiences, and even literature. There are several people who have helped grow my optimistic roots. One of these people is my mother. Every morning before school, she always says, Have a good day. I love you. This helps me know that no matter what the day holds, she is there for me. Then at the end of the day, even if she's had a horribly mangled day at work, she comes home with an optimistic attitude. She always tells a funny joke or pun. She's quick to offer a hug and comfort every single day. My friends are also a part of my optimistic roots. My friend Julian is always a positive person. He's optimistic because he never gives up and he keeps trying no matter what. He takes time to make things for his friends and he generally cares about others. My friend Annalise is also is also another optimistic person. She she always has a pun for every occasion. She often says, "That's so punny." <laughs> She is optimistic by staying calm when she's having a hard time, and she talks out her problems with our group of friends. My friends are constant reminders to be optimistic regardless of the situation. Another source that has grown my optimistic roots are books that I've read. The series that has shown me this the most is The Land of Stories by Chris Cloffer. In his books, he writes about two kids, Alex and Connor, who travel to a fairy tale world, and they have to get out of it by completing quests and they faced a lot of obstacles while doing so. Man-eating wolves, an evil enchantress, and a crumbling castle, just to name a few. Through it all, they faced their fears and persevered to survive in their new reality. Experiences have also grown my optimistic roots. Last summer, I went to New York with my grandparents. When I was there, I saw a lot of less privileged people living on the streets. It really made me think of how lucky and fortunate I am to have a home, clothing, and parents that love me. Because of this, I can be a help to others. The Bible says in Hebrews thirteen sixteen, Do not forget to do good and to share with others. For such sacrifices, God is pleased. Serving others is the seed of optimism. That seed eventually grows and takes root and spreads. My experience as a Cub Scout has also helped me become more optimistic. As a Cub Scout, I have to work with fellow Scouts to complete, a service, to complete service projects. 
when we, when we maintain a can-do attitude and a positive outlook on things, we almost always succeed. The Scout Law states that a Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. The Scout slogan is do a good turn daily. By living by the Scout Law and the slogan, I, I can plant the seed of optimism in others. All in all, there have been a lot of things that have grown my optimistic roots, but all of them have something in common. They all involve overcoming hurdles and facing challenges head on. An unknown author once said, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. I am thankful for the people, experiences, and literature that have grown my optimistic roots. As a popular saying reminds us, cupcakes are muffins that believed in miracles. You can too. <laughs> Very good, Cohen. Now, if that does not cause you to have an optimistic attitude, I don't know what will. We definitely have some talent at Dade Elementary School. Thank you, Cohen, for sharing your message. Now we have Annalise Cravat, and would you tell everyone whose class you are in? I'm in Ms. Powers' fifth grade class. Good. Okay, will you share your message with mm -hmm. the people of Dade County? Where are my roots of optimism? Human beings search for the meaning of life in many different ways, but at some point, everyone should ask of themselves, where do I find my roots of optimism? In other words, where do I find my worth and true joy? To determine that, you must first know what optimism is. Webster's Dictionary defines optimism as an inclination to anticipate the best possible outcome. An optimist is a person who is inclined to be hopeful and expect good things to happen. They look at a glass and see it as half full, not half empty. I find my roots of optimism in my faith in God. I am hopeful about the future because he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for your good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 11. Because I know that even when I fail, God loves me. It gives me strength to face challenges with confidence. I try to be an optimistic person because I want to encourage others to have the same hope that I do. When I go to church, or spend time with my family, or hang out with my friends, I'm happy. The people in my life who love me help motivate me to do my best. They listen to my problems. They help me when I have to go through something hard and laugh with me when I get to do something fun. Knowing that God and my family will always be there for me helps me feel optimistic and hopeful about my future. One of my favorite Bible verses is, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That verse is one of Bethany Hamilton's favorites too. She was a world champion surfer who lost her arm in a shark attack. Instead of being sad and sorry for herself and giving up, she did incredibly hard things by learning to surf again with only one arm. She was able to do this because she found her roots of optimism in God, just like me. When we choose to look on the bright side of things, we have happier, healthier lives. An optimistic attitude could help you climb a mountain, fight cancer, train for the Olympics, or get that A in math you've been working for. There's nothing to be gained from being pessimistic and everything to be gained from being positive about your life. My dog, Sadie, is an optimist. She is always happy and ready to play. Her attitude about life is simple. She likes to eat and she likes to jump. <laughs> she jumps on me, she jumps on my little sister, she jumps on my mom and dad, my grandparents, my friends. Everyone she meets is a potential playmate to her. She's optimistic that we're all going to be just as excited as she is to play fetch or run around in circles. I like to be around her because she's so much fun. Our cat Delilah, on the other hand, is a pessimist. She's grumpy and grouchy and not much fun to be around. I choose to be around people who are positive and fun to be with. My friends tell me jokes, laugh with me when I make puns, and do crazy things with me. 
I feel better about everything in my life when I'm with people who are optimists like me. Nobody likes negative Nancy. Not everything in life is easy, though. Malala Yousafzai grew up in Pakistan, where girls were not allowed to get an education and go to school. She was shot by the Taliban after she started speaking out about women's rights. She lived and went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize. She said, if one man can destroy everything, why can't one girl change it? She chooses optimism every day when she fights for the right to an education. Just because things are not easy doesn't mean we just give up. The world is full of inspiring people. We just have to look for them. Think about it, there wouldn't be any cool movies or books without the main character facing some kind of trial. Our lives are that way too. People with the most inspiring stories to tell are the ones who had to overcome the most. Helen Keller said, optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. When we choose to be optimistic about life, we can do really hard things. I challenge all of you to search for one thing in life that will give you that same hope. Pick up your chin and change your world. I'll leave you with the words of some wise vegetables. God made you special, and he loves you very much. Thank you. I love that. What a great ending. I love your message that we have everything to gain from optimism, but nothing to gain from pessimism. Well spoken. Thank you for sharing your message, and we appreciate the Optimist Club for sponsoring this oratorical contest and giving these young people a chance to voice their opinions and their me share their messages with everyone else. Next on Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic, we have Joni Houts from Dade Elementary School coming up to tell us about pre-K registration and what you need for that um, if you want to enroll a student. We'll see. Georgia Northwestern Technical College is now accepting applications for classes. We offer programs in business, health, industrial, and public service at six campus locations with financial aid options as well. Take day, evening, or online classes to get your degree, diploma, or certificate. Apply now. Drop by one of our campuses today or check us out at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Get focused. Get hired. The Dade County School System continues to put the safety of students first. That's why the Love the Bus Elementary campaign rolls on. Love the Bus is designed to teach students the importance of safety, respect, and proper bus etiquette. As we continue to enhance efforts of safety for our students, we'd like to have you as part of our team. If you're considering a career as a bus driver, call the Dade County Schools Transportation Department at 706-657-7053 today. Part-time hours with full-time benefits as a bus driver for the Dade County School System. Can you gig it? Oh, yes, you can. We know you've been waiting for a long time, and now Tennessee Valley Net is bringing it to you. Gigabit Internet service now available in certain areas of Dade County. Not just fast, super fast Internet service now available from Tennessee Valley Net. People are talking, I mean really smiling, about gig speed Internet available in limited areas from Tennessee Valley Net. Call today at 706-657-4367 or log on at tvn.net and see if gig speed is available where you are. We know you'll gig it from Tennessee Valley Net. Get that next new-to-you vehicle from Rayburn Cloud at Cloud Auto Sales, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon. Right now, check out an 08 Nissan Rogue SL. Real nice, one owner, just $5,995. How about an 05 Ford Explorer, 4x4 with a big V6, only $4,995. Or an 07 Buick Lucerne, real nice, leather and chrome, only $5,995. Visit Cloud Auto Sales on Facebook right now for the latest inventory at Cloud Auto Sales, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon. 597-3273 for Cloud Auto Sales. Delivering top quality primary health care locally. We are Northeast Alabama Health Services. With seven locations, there's one near you. Scottsboro, Section, North Sand Mountain and Higdon, Skyline, Woodville, Fife and Fort Payne. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and of course your private insurance. If you're unemployed, low income, or have a high copay or deductible, you may also qualify for a reduced rate office visit as low as $16. Ask about our free medication program. And ladies, you may qualify for a free or reduced rate mammogram. Dental referrals for our patients with tooth removal and fillings for only $15. Putting your health concerns first, we're Northeast Alabama Health Services. Cervical cancer screenings now available at Northeast Alabama Health Services. 
Welcome back. I am sitting here with my dear friend, Joni Houts, who is the administrative assistant at Dade Elementary School, and she also helps with our pre-K program. And she does a phenomenal job. As a matter of fact, she and our pre-K program received the highest rating the last time the State Department came and did an evaluation. So congratulations, Thank Joni. You. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. And I know that's largely due to the work that, that you do. Well, thank you. Um, first of all, do you want to just tell us um, where and when the pre-K registration is and a little bit about it? Okay. Yes, I'll be glad to. This is the, We're going to be kicking off our pre-K registration and kindergarten. This is pre-K and kindergarten for next school year. Uh, we're having early registration on Tuesday, March the 6th. Kindergarten will start at 12 o'clock. Okay. Pre-K starts at 1 o'clock. We will stay open from 1 to 6 and you'll see a, a flyer come up on your screen in just a minute to give you a little more information. If you have any questions, just please call the school and we'll be glad to give you all the information you need. Uh, this is for any student that's gonna be turning four. If your child will be four on or before September 1st of this year, they're eligible to go to our pre-K program and we strongly encourage this program. It's just a wonderful program. My son went through it, he's 26. <laughs> Miss Rogers was his teacher, <laughs> and he's turned out wonderful. But we have, uh, we had no, uh, but really, we really, really love our pre K program. It's wonderful. Yes. We actually opened up a fifth class this year, so mm -hmm. we've got five classes, and we were just busting out the seams. So, this is really important that you know this information that our spaces are limited. So, it is first come, first serve. That's why we set this date, this time to come. You do have to have a, a copy of your child's birth certificate to at least hold that spot when you come mm -hmm. in. There is some general information, uh, some little handouts and flyers that we'll have that's got a lot of other general information on it that will be very helpful for you at registration day. Um, but that is Tuesday, March the 6th at 12 o'clock is kindergarten. If your child is not in school at all and is going to be skipping the pre-K program, then they can go into kindergarten if they're five. But that, that will be at 12 o'clock on Tuesday, March the 6th. And uh, pre-K will start right after that at 1 o'clock. And Miss Joni, if a child is already enrolled at Dade Elementary mm -hmm. and Kindergarten, will they need to come and register? No. If your child is currently a kindergarten student already in the school system, they will just automatically roll into the kindergarten next year. Okay. So, no, they will not have to come and re-register. Okay, Good great. question. Thank you for asking that. You're welcome. Well, great. I hope we have lots of pre-K students and kindergarten students who come and register for Dade Elementary School. It's a wonderful school. And speaking of that, you will get to see in this next segment how wonderful our students are, what great writers they are and thinkers as we have our school newspaper staff come and share about the features that we write in the school newspaper and how they came up with actually creating a school newspaper this year. So join us for segment three. Sorry, cut, sorry, cut. Um, sorry, had a thought. What if instead of saying advance, I say refund advance? It's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. watch. Okay. okay. Sorry, go on up, go on up. One more time. Again. Refund advance! You can get an interest-free refund advance of up to three thousand dollars the day you file at block. Get money faster. Get your taxes won. Hungry? How about Cloud's Pizza on Highway 71 in Higdon? Not only do we have pizza with dough made fresh every day, Cloud's Pizza serves a delicious hot food bar, and we make cookies fresh every day. Make sure to order the famous cheese sticks made with that fresh dough and real Wisconsin cheese. And don't miss Fish Fry Friday. That includes catfish, hush puppies, and more for only $8.99 Friday, 4 p.m. to close. Cloud's Pizza, Alabama Highway 71 in Higdon, 597-3100. Open till 8, Monday through Saturday at Cloud's Pizza. At Gross Furniture in Trenton, Georgia, you get the savings, the selection, and the satisfaction of getting the furniture you deserve at the prices you want. Come in, relax, and take your time. Our staff can assist you with the entire process, from expert advice to professional delivery. That's because Gross Furniture is local and treats you with honesty. Just north of the Courthouse Square on Highway 11 in Trenton. Gross Furniture, the home furnishing store that offers you more. 
a time-tested financial institution equipped with the latest banking technology, the Bank of Dayton, with mobile banking to fit your on-the-go lifestyle. Download our latest app today for your iPhone, Android, or tablet to bank on the go. Check your balance, pay bills, make deposits, and keep track of your account anytime and anywhere with the Bank of Dade's smartphone app. Make life easier by using today's most advanced banking technology to your advantage. Call us at 657-6842 or visit on the web at bankofdade.com. Your hometown bank since 1956, the Bank of Dade. Main offices on Highway 11 North in Trenton and drive throughs on Highway 11 North and Highway 136 West. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, not fast food, good food fast. Hello, Trenton. Welcome back to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic with Dade Elementary School. We are here today with part of the staff from our Paw Prints school newspaper to share some of the information about how it got started and um, where what we do for the newspaper. So we'll start with our editor, Amelia Anderson. Amelia, can you tell us a little bit about starting the school newspaper? Well... I like to read newspapers like the Dade County Sentinel and the Chattanooga Times Free Press, and I thought it would be fun to have our own school newspaper where students who normally wouldn't have met could get to know each other, and it would just be a fun activity, and we could work together on it. Awesome. So has it been fun, guys? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, you like it? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was surely a grassroots movement. It came directly from Amelia through me to Mrs. Rogers and Mrs. Blevins, and here we are. <laughs> Good job. Amelia, what do, how do we decide on topics, or how do you decide on topics for your editorials? Well, I bounce around ideas in my head that I know <clears throat> or have recently learned, or even over the last few years. I choose the best one for that month, and that's my editorial. And what was your editorial for this past month's edition? It was cyber safety. And where did you, why cyber safety? What made you think about that? Well, I was on, I was on Chromebooks a lot last night, uh, last month, and so I thought, hey, since students spend so much time on Chromebooks and computers, um, I feel like it would be good if they knew how to keep safe. Awesome. Um, Thanks for thinking about your classmates. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, how did we get the name of the newspaper? Would you like to answer that? Mm -hmm. Well, we put a suggestion box in the library for titles, and then the next day we went over the intercom and told all the students during the morning announcements that they could submit titles for our newspaper and we had several entries but like mm, the Dade Elementary Times or Paw Press and then <laughs> but the one we chose was Paw Prints which was submitted by Mr. Bankson, which is the Dade Elementary Tech Guy. Right. Thank you so much. So hat tip, Mr. Bankson. Thank you so much. All right, guys, tell us about some of the, your favorite features of the newspaper. What are some of your favorites, Evan? What's well, that, that you get to ask other students for the surveying. Ah. You get to have an interest that other students would pick in different age groups. And you, so you get to go to different places in the school and talk to different kids? Yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. What about you, H? Um, I had been writing about sports. Ah. Last issue I wrote um, about the national championship game. Um, right. And it was jo the Georgia Bulldogs first uh, Alabama Crimson Tide. Was it hard to stay neutral when you wrote about that? Because I know that you're a big Who fan. Who are you a big fan of? Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs, yeah. Was it hard to stay neutral as a yeah. as an reporter? Ah. It was very hard. Uh-huh. 
So anything you want to tell us about that game? No, not really. <laughs> you did a great job with that article. What about you, Miss Bella? Um, I like on the back of the newspaper where you interview um, a certain class about their projects. Ah, uh -huh. and have, so far we've had two. Which two, what have we done so far, do you remember? Um, for the last issue we had Miss Julia Weedner uh -huh. on the panning for gold. Right, yeah. And then the first one we had, the first grade, with their um, Polar Express, wasn't it? Yeah, good job you guys. What about, um, why did you guys decide to be part of the newspaper staff? What brought you in? Because I needed an after school thing to do during school and because I thought it would be really fun. Oh, good. And what about you, Miss Bella? Um, I wanted to do a after school activity and once I did the newspaper, it, loved, it made me love writing even more. Awesome. What about you, H? I wanted to get involved in something besides sports. Uh -huh. I usually write this sports column. <laughs> so this allows me to combine two interests, writing and sports. I get to share my love of sports with others good, and you by do doing this. Great. You do a good job with both. What about you, Miss Amelia? I, well, you told us, didn't you, mm -hmm. that you just got the idea. Yeah. I do the editorial. Yeah. Uh, and last month was, this past month was the cyber safety, and the first one was about the staff, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You got to introduce the staff to everybody in the school, mm -hmm. and you did a great job with that. Um, tell me about some of the features that you guys have written. Maybe some of your favorites? Mm. Mm. What about mm. you? No, what about Evan? What about you, sweetie? You mentioned the survey earlier. Yeah. yeah so you like doing the survey part. And it's, just, it's really interesting to uh -huh. know other people. What they think? Yeah. And what, was, what were the results of this past survey that we did for this past issue? Well, we asked students their favorite animal. Uh-huh. And dogs won with 131 votes. So dogs were the big winner <laughs> yeah. at, our, at our school in the survey. Cats yeah. were pretty close, but dogs won by far. What were the four? Do you remember what the animals were that were in the survey? Turtle, fish, um, cat, and dog. Oh, okay. And out of that group, dogs were the winner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. First was thirds. First was dogs. Second was cats. Third was fish, and fourth was turtles. Uh huh. Good. Thanks for that. What do you guys hope that the students in our school will gain from the newspaper? What do you think? Well, um, I would hope that they will keep up to date. And we think that maybe it'll get, it'll give some students a chance to be in the know With of the school and all the events coming up or that have been done and what the results were. That's, yeah, and just to share from grade level to grade level so that we know what each other is doing. Good. Anything you'd like to add to that? H, you have Not anything really. to layer on? Okay. Would you guys like to be part of the staff next year? Would you like to continue next year? Definitely. Yes. Oh, okay, but well, that is high praise. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad for that. Um, what's the craziest thing that's ever been in the suggestion box? Well, it was a Who Will Win series about who, about SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Star fighting. <laughs> They wanted that in the newspaper? <laughs> yeah. It was suggested by a first grader. Oh, okay. A first grader. That explains it a little, I yeah. guess. And so they must really like... Uh, SpongeBob. Sponge yeah. <laughs> exactly. What about you, Miss Miss Bella? What would you like to say? Um, I would like to give a shout-out to Dr. Harris and our school board for um, making Miss Tracy Blevins, our principal's wish come true, that we have every computer for every student. Yay, thank you, yes, thank you. Thanks for that, thank you. All right, who, uh, would anybody here like to leave us with a knock-knock joke? <laughs> no. Um, knock-knock. Who's there? Canoe. Canoe, who? Can you do a backflip? Oh, <laughs> not in a million years. Uh, anybody? I can do all one. right, all right, let's hear yours, Miss Amelia. Knock, knock. Who's there? Nobody. Nobody? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Eight. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? I'm sorry, did I scare you? <laughs> Who's there? Evan? <laughs> this isn't really a knock, knock joke, but who's the sickest person alive? 
the illustrator. Oh, <laughs> yay. Um, and the knock knock joke from this month's paper was do you remember? Knock knock. Who's there? there? Dewey. Dewey, who? Do, do we have to go to school tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, Thank we don't. Thank you so much. We, we enjoyed don't have it. to. <laughs> Bye.